Being Rock Paper Shotgun's number one animal fan, they can all try and fight me on that, but I have a pretty good case for it. I, Alice of the RPS video team, got the chance to play with the demo of Planet Zoo at Gamescom this year, alongside Alice B, the deputy editor of Rock Paper Shotgun the site. Just like the animals getting on Noah's Ark, which was kind of the original zoo, Alice's also come in pairs. Despite not being a real-life zoo advocate, I can't say no to looking at cute digitised forms of all the very best creatures on this planet, and Planet Zoo has done an amazing job of capturing real life in this game. Planet Zoo is Frontier Development's latest game in the Planet franchise, and the game we've all been waiting for. If you miss Zoo Tycoon, that is. They had a very admirable success with Planet Coaster, the spiritual successor to everyone's favourite childhood game, Roller Coaster Tycoon, which was released way back in 2016. Last year they released Jurassic World Evolution, which is pretty much Planet Zoo but with dinosaurs. It's safe to say then that the team at Frontier definitely know what they're doing when it comes to park management games, so it's safe to assume that Planet Zoo is going to be one of the best things since sliced bread. Or Planet Coaster. Or Jurassic World Evolution. Before I get into just why you'll love Planet Zoo, let me just say a quick thanks to Logitech G and the G432 7.1 surround sound gaming headset for sponsoring this video. To check out the tech behind the G432, click the link in the description. In case it wasn't already obvious from what you've seen on screen, Planet Zoo looks a heck of a lot like Planet Coaster. From the UI to the human models, it's all keeping a very set theme and look that will make Planet Coaster fans rejoice. You will essentially already know exactly how to play the basics of this game without any of the tutorials, right down to the movement tools. You know the drill, unless you're new to the whole Planet series. There are a lot of key features that are important to Planet Zoo that were not in Planet Coaster, such as overall heat maps for animal welfare, temperature, water quality, power, buildings being hidden from the view of guests, education and guest happiness. Obviously, instead of coasters, you have animals, of which there are over 50 across habitat and exhibit. Though sadly, I didn't get to see any exhibit animals. Animals being living beings means there's a lot more management going on for them. Where Planet Coaster really excelled at making realistic coasters and allowing you to build them from scratch and having a clear amount of research having gone into coasters and theme parks, Planet Zoo has the same amount of knowledge but this time for the animals. Everything from their look to their habitat and even down to the way they move. The animals don't have the same dorky look as the patrons of the park and they are visually stunning, as are their environments. I think where I'll excel at most in Planet Zoo is making the animals happy, as I was absolutely shocking at making decent roller coasters. They were either too boring or too sick inducing, and I could never find that sweet spot in the middle. Now all I have to do is look after cute animals. Easy, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? There are guests running around with their hands in the air, but not for anything good. At the beginning of this demo, the first challenge we were met with was an escapee. This doesn't happen with roller coasters, let me tell you. Rayon the Rhino needs to be locked up safe in their animal prison and not wandering around scaring all the guests. Though look at how cute the animal camera is! You can set this to cinematic or orbit and it's just so cute watching all the animals do their thing. I use this quite a lot throughout my gameplay. In order to fix this problem, I needed to hire a vet so the vet can tranquilize the animal. This happened in Jurassic World Evolution 2, but there's not a first person shooter camera here, which is nice. I don't know how I'd feel shooting a cute animal, and yes, rhinos are cute. The vet then boxes the animal up, shrinks them down, and puts the animal back in their habitat. Note how they actually go around and use the door to the enclosure rather than going through the lack of fence. Truly a valued employee. To fix this enclosure and get the rhino habitat back up and running, you have to close that gap in the wall. You do this by double clicking on the fence and bringing up the right fencing type. I don't know if it's because I played Planet Coaster, but I don't find Planet Zoo anywhere near as daunting as I found my first few games with Planet Coaster. It might just be because I love all the cute animals though. There are many different types of fences, but the one used on this enclosure is an electric fence, which is fine as long as there is power. Obviously, if the power goes down, so do the zaps, and our rhino friend could escape once more. As great a time as they were having, and as I'm trying to suppress the animal liberator side of me for greater roleplaying, we can't be having that. But look at how cute the unboxing is! A true celebration. Animals are complex creatures. Sure, they might poop where they stand and have very little shame about doing so, but they ultimately have a lot of needs they need to have met. Some of these animals that are more complex than they appear are the animals with the cutest snoots in the biz. It's the tapirs. 
These tapirs need a little bit more fun going on in their lives, and in order to get them their fun, we need to look at their very own specialised habitat needs. Going to the Habitat tab, you can see all the items that you can place down in habitats, from food and water to bedding and shelter, enrichment items and heaters and coolers. You can filter these all by animal, so you won't accidentally put the rhino's favourite toys in the tapir's habitat. Looking at the animal's toys and feeders, you can also see the climbing section here, but tapirs don't climb. You can see a barrel feeder, a ball, some scratching items and some sprinklers. I put down one of everything and loved watching the barrel bounce and roll. Some of these items have proper physics going on and it's touches like that that make it so much more immersive. The sprinkler will eventually cool that area down and here you can see a tapir playing with a box I've placed. These tapirs also want more plant coverage, which can be seen in the environment tab. This is broken down into trees, shrubs and rocks and you can filter by continent and biome. There are only three biomes available in the demo though, more on those later. And the larger the tree, the bigger the impact. These also give them shade and shelter depending on the weather type. More on that later too. One of my favourite things I saw during the demo was the water volumetrics and how much it impacts the actual happiness of not only the animals but also of the guests. Looking at the water quality tab, we can see there's a problem with the gharial habitat. And if you get your camera angle right underneath the water, you can see just how murky and dirty the water is, thanks to added volumetrics. This water is so dirty it will increase the chance of infection and disease for our poor croc pal. And also the guests will be unhappy because they wouldn't be able to see as much. To fix this, you'll need to add a water treatment facility and make sure that facility has access to a path so a mechanic can get to it when it deteriorates or if it gets vandalised. One thing to note though is that guests won't like to see that facility, so eventually you'll need to make sure it's disguised. Other things to make sure a habitat is a happy habitat are things such as enrichment items and they are so cute! Here you can see Zoe the pronghorn antelope carrying around one of her enrichment items and she's having a great time. The enrichment items are specific to certain species, and the menus are easy to navigate, filter and search through just like they are in Planet Coaster. You can click on individual animals to see how happy they are and what they need, and it's clear that despite Zoe's love for her little kettlebell thing, she has a few issues with her habitat. She needs more grass. And let me just take a moment here to appreciate how goddamn nice the long grass looks. Just look at those blades waving around in the breeze. While we're here, there are also some terrain and sculpting tools that are really easy to use. You can stamp shapes onto the ground, choosing a specific height and width, and making lovely little raised areas. Animals can walk over anything you can sculpt, though I think they probably wouldn't be able to get up that massive lump. Another habitat that was made into a home was the mandrels. They like to run around a lot and climb, but they don't have enough climbing space or the right terrain, which leads to some fighting as they're pretty unhappy. Also, apologies in advance for any butt shots you might see whilst we're hanging out with these dudes. They're just so… there. We can sort out the terrain, easy peasy by adding some grass, and at the same time reducing the amount of sand in the enclosure, and then we need to add some climbing frames. Easy as pie. It's not just the animals that are happy with these asset placements, it's the guests too. You can place interesting things near windows so that it draws a larger crowd. For instance, this tapir swimming has brought some nosy people in to have a closer look and this bear playing with its feeder has done the same. The climbing frames we built a minute ago can be uniquely made every time, and just like in Planet Coaster, all of the pre-made assets are made using in-game pieces that players can recreate themselves or pull apart and alter. The blueprints work in much the same way as Coaster and can be uploaded to the Steam Workshop to be shared. There's also a new mode in Planet Zoo. Franchise mode is a new way to play alongside the classic sandbox and career modes, and this is how you'll be able to trade online with other players. You'll be able to build multiple zoos to trade within those, get rare animals and up their points and ratings. It'll be simulation meets sandbox. And in the animal trading tab, you can see all the animals you can purchase. What suits the biome you're in, what's available, a rough breakdown of their genetics and their star rating. The better the animal, the more they cost. Here you'll also be able to use conservation credits, which you can get by being very ethical and having a highly rated zoo, and you'll be able to get access to rarer animals. Just shower me with a million conservation credits already, please. There will be zero, yes zero, unhappy animals on my watch. <laughs> Buying the animal puts them in the trade center where you'll be able to see all your animals in holding, do research, prepare habitats and then release them into their new homes when you're ready. Clicking send to zoo will let us select the correct habitat and see that the delivery has been scheduled. 
Here you can see a caretaker arriving with the box and releasing the Bengal tiger. What a cute kitty! He needs a fair amount of enrichment in order to be happy, but that's easy. Have you not seen how happy I made those tapirs? The staff were a pretty integral part of the zoo, perhaps more so than they were in Planet Coaster. A lot more thought has gone into them, from their roles as caretakers, keepers, mechanics, security, vendors and vets. The roles seem a lot more fleshed out. I think this comes from being able to actually follow staff members around and into the rooms and buildings they use. They're not rabbit hole buildings like we saw in Planet Coaster. I use the term rabbit hole because it reminds me of the jobs in The Sims where you can't follow them to work, they just disappear off the home lot. They're rabbit holes. For example, if we look here, we can follow this vet as they pick up the sick mandrel to take them to the vet surgery. We can watch them run and track them as they go all the way to and inside of the building. This wouldn't have happened in Planet Coaster and is something I think it was severely lacking. The very fact staff now have rooms you can actually go into proves how important these characters are to the gameplay now. You can actually see what they're doing. The animal goes onto the table here and is healed by the vet. It happens super quickly, but this could be down to either high skill or a development issue which will be fixed come release. There are also keeper huts, staff rooms and mechanic rooms, so it will give the zoo a much more full feel compared to Planet Coaster's rabbit holes. A welcome change in my eyes. And you really have to admire some of these staff members. As I was zooming in to take a closer look at this cute little snoot, I spied a zookeeper hoovering up some poop in the background. The heroes we deserve. You'll be able to create some absolutely beautiful zoos, each more different from the last, as there are a number of themed biomes. It's worth bearing in mind, however, that different animals will prefer different biomes. For example, these cute little bears will want snow and to be cool. The map that we're playing on here is the new Indian theme, and everything you can see can be made by the player from scratch. There will also be European, African and North American themes, but remember, it will be possible to make habitats suitable for animals that are perhaps not used to those specific biomes. There's also a really neat feature which allows you to change the time of day and temperature. You can make it daytime to see the enclosures better and you can cycle between good weather, rain and snow to see how the habitats change and how the animals react. The rain effects are beautiful, watching the clouds roll in and then open up is so nice to watch. And with the snow you will see that it only settles where the ground is cool enough. In this bear enclosure the snow lands near the coolers. And you can see overall where these hot and cold patches are using the temperature heat map. For instance, in another point in the park there is a sprinkler. The snow will land on everything it touches and make it look so fantastically realistic. And finally, one of the nicest touches I like about this game is the protesters. It's no hidden secret that people try to boycott animal prisons, uh, sorry, zoos, and I think it's a good thing they're drawing this to attention. These protesters don't want to shut the whole place down and they don't go around making your guests feel bad for being there, or stop them from gaining entry, but they do go around with little placards of animals that have perhaps been neglected and have lower welfare than deemed acceptable for a certain period of time. They'll walk around and protest. It's a clever way of flagging a notification you may have missed, but also negatively impacts other guests. It's nice that the guests are super dynamic, what with the running away from the relatively chill rhino at the beginning, to walking around letting their concerns be known in a polite and controlled manner. Planet Zoo feels very much alive. If it wasn't already obvious, I'm pretty hyped for Planet Zoo. I was a massive fan of Planet Coaster, but I love animals more than I love adrenaline, so I can't wait to get myself stuck into zoo management. It's due to be released on November 5th, four days before my birthday, so if you're wanting to get me a gift, I think you know what I'll be expecting. But for those of you who want to get stuck in sooner, the beta runs between September 24th and October 8th, and is available to those with deluxe edition pre-orders. And thanks again to Logitech G for sponsoring this video. Featuring 50mm audio drivers, a 6mm mic and DTS Headphone X 2.0 surround sound technology under the hood, the G432 headset immerses you in the action and ensures you'll always be heard for a complete gaming experience. Find out how to order yours by following the link in the description. What's your favourite zoo animal? Are you excited to make them the happiest little beans ever? Because I definitely cannot wait to get my hands on making loads of big cat enclosures. Cats are the best, right? We'll be covering more on Planet Zoo up to and after its release, so why not like this video so we know you'll be back for more, and subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun to see all of our videos in the meantime. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you again soon.